Starting the bulletin with, of course, the top developments from Israel, where an unprecedented 300,000 reservists have been called up amid the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. Israeli forces have already announced a total siege of the Gaza Strip in a sign that it may be planning a full-blown ground assault. So far, over 900 people have been confirmed dead in Israel and over 700 deaths have been reported from Gaza. In the latest, the Israeli forces have reacted to a threat from Hamas. The Israeli forces told Hamas that killing hostages will not make things better. Israeli authorities believe women and children are among up to 150 hostages being held by Hamas in Gaza. Well, earlier, the Hamas group issued a stern warning. The militant group that's taken over 100 hostages said it would start executing them one by one for every civilian house bombed by Israel without warning. Moments ago, the Israeli Air Force said it had airlifted hundreds of thousands of Israeli troops who were, sorry, hundreds of Israeli troops who were abroad across Europe to fight Hamas. The military said heavy transport planes flew to various countries in Europe to bring the off-duty soldiers back to Israel. Earlier, the Israeli army said around 1,500 bodies of Hamas militants had been found inside Israel around the Gaza Strip. That is, of course, a very big number given that the existing death toll shared by both parties combined was barely over 1,600 so far. The statement also added that Israeli forces have more or less restored control over the Gaza border. Dashcam footage has emerged, capturing the moment of horror as people fled from the site of a music festival in Israel where Hamas militants killed over 270 people. The militants can be seen shooting at cars of people fleeing the spot. Well, the developments come as the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, discussed U.S. support for Israel in a call with the Israeli Foreign Minister, Eli Cohen. Blinken emphasised efforts to secure the immediate release of all hostages. On Ground Zero, Israel continued with its heavy bombardment of Hamas hideouts in Gaza with common Palestinians fleeing their homes. In total, Israel says over 1,200 locations have been hit in the strikes that have continued now for over three days. The Palestinian Health Ministry in Gaza has called for the opening of a safe corridor to ensure the entry of urgent medical aid into the territory's hospitals. The medical facilities in the Strip, of course, have been overwhelmed with the dead and wounded so far. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency earlier highlighted the dire situation in Gaza saying its emergency shelters in the Strip are at 90% capacity, with more than 137,000 people taking cover from Israeli strikes. The agency said 83 UNRWA schools have been turned into shelters. On October 7th, Hamas bombarded Israel with thousands of rockets in an unprecedented attack, triggering a fresh conflict in the region. The Hamas fighters also infiltrated the Israeli territory from land, sea and air, going on a rampage, killing civilians and taking up to 150 hostages. Israel launched retaliatory airstrikes across Gaza, declaring a war against the Hamas group. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Arsen Ostrovsky, CEO of the International Legal Forum, joining us live from Tel Aviv. Arsen, many thanks for your time. I hope you're OK over there. Um, please give us your latest assessments after these quite harrowing scenes we've seen over the past three days. Uh, thank you for having me on. And uh, thankfully, I and my family are safe at the moment. But if I may, uh, with all due respect, make a, uh, make a correction, albeit an important one. And unequivocal about that. There is no other way to describe the kind of barbarism that we have seen. Children kidnapped at gunpoint, elderly women in wheelchairs, Holocaust survivors dragged from their families executed in cold blood. These are not fighters, these are not militants, these are terrorists, and we have to be clear and unequivocal about that.
Yes, uh, it's been quite shocking to watch from from over here in Britain. Austin, give us your thoughts now. The reaction from Israel has been obviously extreme in its reaction to now try and neutralise Gaza. Where does where do things go from here? Because whilst there is, of course. A, Israel's right to defend its territory. There are concerns now that Gaza is going to be completely flattened. Well, I don't believe Gaza is going to be completely flattened, uh, but we also need to put ourselves in the position of Israel. What would you do if this was your family? Hundreds, at least over 100, over 150 Israeli civilians are currently being held captive, hostage um, in Gaza, and that includes young children. Over a thousand people have already been murdered, slaughtered in Israel. Over 5,000 rockets were fired. Israel, like any sovereign nation, has not only the right, but the duty and the obligation, including under international law, to take whatever action deemed necessary in order to defend its citizens. Um, I feel sorry, I truly do, for the people of Hamas, as for the people of Gaza, I apologize. But the reality is, it is that Hamas is committing a double war crime. They not only are using but they're also using them intentionally to target civilians in Israel. They're the only party upon whom the responsibility lays for what is happening here today, both within Israel and within Gaza, is Hamas.